Hallelujah. Are you all blessed? Open up your Bibles. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning verse 19. We're continuing our series on heaven's rewards. How many of y'all been blessed for the past couple of weeks of, of, of hearing about heaven's rewards? In heaven, you're going to be rewarded. But you're going to be rewarded for the work that you do in this world. Salvation does not come by your works. Salvation comes because of the finished work at the cross of Jesus Christ. He went to the cross. He died on the cross for your sins. He was buried in the grave. And three days he rose from the dead that whoever believes in him will have e eternal life. Amen. So you don't earn it. You receive it. Amen. Say, I'm saved, I'm saved. by grace through faith. It is finished. And so the salvation is a completed work. So if we know that, that salvation through Jesus Christ is the way we get to heaven, what are these heaven rewards? These heaven rewards are rewards for the service that we give to God in this world. And once, you know, we recognize that, that God has a plan and purpose for our life, and it's not just to get to heaven. If it was just to get to heaven, we should have died after we, got, after we got saved and just gone up real quick. No, God has a plan and purpose for your life to use you in this world to show his glory off to others. And as we are faithful to do what God calls us to do, when we get to heaven, he's going to give us crowns. Amen. Not one crown, but there are several crowns. And so we're learning about the different crowns that are available to the believer that are rewarded to us by God for the service unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Bible talks about in Revelation that the elders will cast their crowns at the feet of Jesus. And I believe that we're going to be included in that group that we'll be able to take the crowns that we've been rewarded and give all the glory and all the honor back to Jesus, amen, and worship him with the crowns that we have received, amen. Now, this is a reward for the service. And so, as a pastor, I used to think that I'm going to just be a good pastor and get many people saved. But the Lord, since I've been studying this word and encouraging myself to, to minister to you, the Lord has kind of reshaped and refocused me in the, in, the, in, the, in the office of a pastor that my job is not just to get people saved, but my job is to equip you so that you can do the work of the ministry and be rewarded with all five crowns. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but all five, amen. How many of you want to be rewarded with all five crowns? And that's a reward for the work, the sacrifice, the obedience to the call of God upon your life. Amen. So we're studying the different heaven rewards. And today we are learning about the crown of rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing. If you don't like joy, you're not going to like heaven. Amen. And this crown of rejoicing is the evangelist crown. This is the crown for winning souls. Amen. Amen. Say, I'm a soul winner. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19, after all what gives us hope and joy and what will be our proud reward and crown as we stand before our Lord Jesus when he returns, it is you. Yes, you are our pride and joy. And so Paul was speaking about the crown of, of rejoicing because of the salvation of those that he had led to Christ, the salvation of the, the Thessalonians. And so he's saying, that is my joy. That's the joy that God is going to reward me with. That's the crown that I'm going to receive because I was able to lead you to Christ. Amen. And so that's the crown of rejoicing. It's the evangelist crown. So if you don't like to win souls, you're not going to receive this crown. 
But if you want to see people go to heaven and know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that's the, the reward that you keep your eye upon. That they're going to go into heaven and they'll be accounted at the, day, at, the, at the last day in the presence of God and that you had a part to bring them with you into heaven. I led them to Christ. I was able to show them Jesus and who he is to me. And because of my faithfulness to preach the gospel and declare the good news that Jesus loves them, they have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I was able to be a part of that. Amen? Hallelujah. And so we have to tell people about Jesus to receive this reward. Amen? In 2 Corinthians... Chapter 5, we're going to do a little bit of reading. I only got about 10 chapters to read here. Just kidding. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. I love this very first statement. For the love of Christ compels us. And it says, because we judge, the, we judge us that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore... If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Let me stop there for a moment. There are people that get saved and then they begin to judge others whether they're worthy of getting saved. There are people that used to be, you know, they used to have all sorts of addictions, all sorts of brokenness, all sorts of perversions, all sorts. I mean, they look like the world, they talk like the world, they smell like the world, and they get saved because they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they love what God has done in their life, and they're so excited about God, but then they think about their friend that they used to do all those things with in the world, and they're thinking, well, now I can't. I, I can't tell them about my salvation because they're a sinner. And just because you've been saved, now you judge the one that you used to be. And so you think, oh, they're unworthy of this salvation that I have received. But so are you. But it's because of the love of God. That's why when we minister to people, it doesn't matter how broken they are. We have the one that fixes all things. It doesn't matter how dirty they might be. We have the one that cleanses them of all unrighteousness by his blood. Amen. The greater the the sin, the greater the glory. Amen. Amen. And so, so that's why we have to recognize that the, the power of salvation and the power of the cross, it is for all men, no matter where they came from, no matter where they're at. The Bible says Jesus went about destroying the works of sin. We are preaching the gospel, and when the gospel comes, it destroys the works of sin. It makes that person who used to be, have distortions in their life and brokenness in life, it heals them, it restores them. And not only does it heal, restore, and change them, but when you see the completed work of the cross in that person's life, you won't even recognize that person as, they'll say, I used to be this way. Uh-uh, no, you didn't. Yes, I came from that. No, you didn't. But I was out. No, you didn't. No, no, not, not you. What? You were involved in that? What? You did those things? What? You had that life? No. Yeah. No. That, no. I can't, I can't even imagine you being that person because you've changed so much. That's the work of the blood. Amen. 
It transforms you. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And so it doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what they're going through. Once they have Jesus, he shapes and molds them and changes them. And he does a work, a complete healing and restoration in their life. Amen. How many thank God that he saved you and cleansed you and, and set you free. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So verse, verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Say, I have a ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. <laughs> I don't think I have to preach anymore. This is so good. <laughs> Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, we, get, we, we have... I'm just going to make it very simple. I'm, I got a bunch of notes. And, but we have the privilege, the privilege, the great honor of calling people home. When we preach the gospel, it's like ringing that bell that brings the, the, cow, the cows home when they hear it. When we preach the gospel, we are literally grabbing the hand of the Father and the hand of the lost, and putting them back together. They're lost. They don't know where salvation is. But we who have been found in Christ Jesus, we know our Lord and our Savior. Jesus is the one that, re that connects us back to the Father in him. And so when I preach the gospel and I tell people about the love of Jesus Christ and what he's done for me, and I offer them the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And they begin to believe in Jesus Christ. I've grabbed the hand of the father. And I've grabbed the hand of the child, the lost son. And I brought them together. I've reconciled them. I, I, this one beautiful testimony that happened when I was a, a youth pastor. There was a, a, a son that, that left home and ran away. And... Uh, you know, it just, you know, going through a difficult time, going through a time of, you know, trying to figure out life and trying to figure out where he belonged. And uh, the father had reached out to me and told me about what was going on. It was very late. So before I went to bed, I said, Lord, show me where, where this young man is. And as I was asleep, about 3 o'clock in the morning, the Holy Spirit wakes me up. And so I just listen to him and I get in my car. And the Holy Ghost began to tell, show me where, where to go. And I just followed the leading of the Holy Ghost. And I found the young man. And I said, come on, let's go. And so uh, I took him to Denny's to eat pancakes. Not just to bless him, but pancakes early in the morning is a good thing. <laughs> I think I had my own personal motives there. <laughs> he was his company. Um, and we just talked and and. and you know, just got repurposed in life. And that morning I brought him back home to his house and he got reconciled to his family. Amen. Think about that, the way the father, what would a father do if they knew that their child was lost and missing? There was nothing the father would not do. The father would sacrifice everything to reach his child. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only son so that he could receive you as sons. That whoever believes in him will not 
perish, but they'll have everlasting life. And so the love of God compels us with this message of, of reconciliation, this, this gospel of preaching and talking about the love of the Father. And it's our job to, to introduce everybody we get in contact with to Jesus. And it happens first through our, our love, the way we conduct ourselves, that we don't, we don't walk like the ways of the world. The Bible says that we're not supposed to be conformed to this world, but we're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. The Lord begins to speak his word over our life. And so the things that we used to do, those things fall away. That we're no longer that person. We don't see that identity no more. We have a new identity in Christ Jesus. I'm no longer the lost. I'm the found. I'm no longer someone without pers- purpose. I am an ambassador of Christ. So wherever I go, I represent the kingdom of God. Whether it's in the house, whether it's in the business, whether it's in the street, wherever I'm at, I represent represent the kingdom of God, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And so if anybody wants to find out about who God is and who Jesus is, they should be able to go to any ambassador and that ambassador should be able to show them the way. Amen. Amen. And then when we find someone that is not part of the family, that, that's not part of the body of Christ, it should be, they should be the mission that is our purpose. I've come so that I can bring them home. But pastor, you know, I, I'm a little embarrassed. I don't know if I could talk about Jesus the way, the way you can. You know, you'll never know if you don't try. <laughs> you'll never know if you don't try. you never know unless you begin to speak about the love of God. And don't, don't give me the excuse while I told them about church. I mean, I, I don't even know... How many times have you heard me tell, tell you, hey, invite your friends to church? You should. But it's about getting people saved. It's about the ministry of reconciliation. It's why we sacrifice. That's why we give. That's why we speak. That's why we live. If I'm not living for that, what am I living for? If I'm not living for Jesus, what am I living for? Oh, so I get an education? Okay, you got an education. Now what's next? So I get a job? Okay, you got a job. What's next? So I get a family? Get a family. Now what's next? So that I could die without living out your purpose and the reason why you are here? No, 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 no. God's calling you to a higher life. Amen? And the Bible says it's the love that compels us to, to minister to those that are lost. You know, so when you meet someone... We want to tell them about Jesus. God, we want to show them about the love of God. Yesterday's meeting and all-day prayer was all about, about, Lord, change our hearts so that we'll be, we, 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 we will want to be representatives of you. We want to show your love to as many people as possible. Amen. Amen? And so that's why we do this, so we can bring the lost children back home. The Bible says, the, you know, the Word of God talks about that when the, the lost come back into, come to God. You have to understand, they can't see God, but we have met God. We are our witnesses, so we tell them what Jesus has done for us. Amen? You with me? Amen. And so we, we, since we know our God, we, we in, introduce them to Christ. And because we introduce them to Christ, their eyes are open and they begin to see God with their heart. Amen? The Spirit of God comes. You know, that's what I love about the Holy Ghost. We don't witness by ourselves. Heaven backs us up, amen? We're an ambassador of the kingdom, so the kingdom backs us up with power. That's why miracles, signs and wonders, amen? Outpourings of God's glory are available, amen? All to show the world that Jesus is alive and that God loves them, amen? Hallelujah. And, and, and we, we, we step out in that call, we, we step out in that ministry, and we don't give up on the ministry. But the Bible talks about that when someone who is lost comes home, there's a great celebration. There is great rejoicing. Amen. Listen, sometimes words don't really have the emotion and the feeling that it should have. You know? It, you know, like uh, if I say let's have a party, that's a good word. But, you know, what, what, what's the Spanish word? Pachanga. 
felt something like that. <laughs> Everybody say pachanga. There's something, oh, that's, I mean, like literally your feet start moving a little bit when you just start saying. <laughs> Why? Because that word has more of an emotion. Amen. And so the, great, the greatest English word that we could find for this is rejoicing or celebration. Amen. But that's not what, listen, the Bible talks about a man who asked his father to give him his inheritance and he left the kingdom and wasted it all on living out a life of, to his flesh and just, he wasted all his inheritance and he found himself with nothing. He found himself wanting to eat the, the food of a pig because that was the only food that was there. And he said to himself, if I go back to my father's house, his servants live better than this. So he wanted to be a servant in his father's house, no longer a son because he wasted his inheritance. But when he came back, the father was looking. And when he started coming close to the house, the Bible says that the father came running to him. And the father embraced him. The father put a, co a coat upon, his, upon him. The father put sandals on his feet, a ring on his, on his finger. And, and, and the father told everybody, he said, he said, kill the fatted calf. We are going to celebrate because my son who has lost has, has come alive again. He's come home again. And there was great celebration. Amen. The Bible says in heaven, all the angels celebrate when someone comes to God. It's not just a, I'm so happy for him. I'm talking about angels dancing. I'm talking about bands playing. And I'm not just saying here in this world. I'm talking about all heaven celebrates. Think about the greatest royal procession where the king is there. And all of his glory and all the angels are celebrating. And the father saying, my son is home. Welcome, my son. And when someone receives Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and they've been reconciled back to the Father, the joy that comes inside their heart is so overwhelming that it doesn't come out with, with smile and, and laughs. It comes out in tears because it's an overwhelming experience. It's beyond earthly emotions. And it's, I'm just thankful. And that's the ministry that God has given us to reconcile those that are lost back to him again. And that's the, the reward for bringing souls into the kingdom of God is a crown of rejoicing. Amen. Amen. Romans eight nineteen. Romans 8, 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Amen. Not only heaven is waiting for those that are lost to come home, but all of creation, all the stars, all the trees, all the animals, the whole earth, the whole universe, all of creation is waiting for the sons of righteousness to be revealed. Nobody knows who's saved. But once they give their life to God, everything recognizes that is no longer that person of this world. That person is a, a man of God, a woman of God. Now, I don't know the best way to explain this and give you an illustration, so I'm just going to do my best. How many of y'all remember the movie Lion King. Do you remember when the young lion was born and all the animals came? They all showed up and they're all waiting in expectation because they heard that there was the birth of a new young lion. The son of the king had been born. And they all gathered, they're all waiting. And what did, what did the, the king, what was his name? Mufasa. What? 
Mufasa. Some of you guys answered that better than answering scripture, you know. (laughs) (laughs) And what was the son? Was it Simba? And so he went to the ledge of the mountain where all the animals were there to witness the revealing of the son of the king. And then when he left, he lifted them up so that all can see. Great celebration. I'm telling you, that's the way I see myself in the arms of God. (laughs) Where the father just lifted me up and said, look, here is my son. All creation has been waiting for your revealing as a son of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. And so when I open my mouth and I tell someone about Jesus, that's just the father positioning himself. And when that person gives their life to the Lord, the father reveals that that man, that woman, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all receive that word today? Stand up on your feet. Praise the Lord.